This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1421, Limitations, by Audie Redzik of audiredzik.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, where I get permission from the authors of the best blogs I can find on personal development, minimalism, productivity, anything that I think will help you live a more meaningful life. And then I simply read their content to you for free. And I have a brand new author for you today. Audie is an award-winning life, business, and leadership coach, entrepreneur, author of two books, and motivational speaker. From a war-torn childhood to meetings at the White House, Audie has proven the possibility of change and growth. Come by his site to learn more and to support him. A big thanks to him for letting me share his work. So without further ado, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Limitations by Audie Redzik of audiredzik.com. If you know me, you also know that I am wired to reach new vistas challenge myself to break my own limits and expand and grow in every possible way and preferably take others along with me. Indeed, I believe our purpose is growth and breaking the limits of yesterday. However, I've also learned that not all of us are wired this way. As a coach, this is a hard pill to swallow. I was talking to a friend and she shared how her parents had been the same and had lived the same lives for the last 30 years. She too had a hard time understanding that someone would pick sameness over advancement. I wondered, Are they even aware of their own limits? Are they scared of them? Each of us has a capacity on any given day. I talk about mental, physical, and emotional spoons with my clients. This capacity, like lifting weights, is very real, and pushing beyond it right away can be harmful. But like with lifting weights, what happens? What can be done over time and with proper support? Then I wondered, are we all designed in a way that we reach a point when going beyond these personal limits is impossible? Recently, another person pointed out to me that this is indeed a reality for many, including himself. Again, a very hard pill to swallow. At the same time, research as well as anecdotal experiences, including my own, confirm otherwise. So what gives? Then it hit me. We can overcome our own limits, but only if we are aware of them and we choose to do so. As a human species, we are actually wired to seek new vistas and break our own barriers. Why have goals otherwise? Look at all the invention and advancement. Additionally, there are very few limits, especially when it comes to personal self-work that we can't break. Therefore, the question is how do we do it and will we? Here are five ways to do so. Number one, recognition. The key step is recognizing what our limitations are at the moment and being brutally honest with ourselves and about them. For example, I have an issue with letting go. I'm like a pit bull. Once I grab onto something, I don't let go. Unless I acknowledge that this is a limitation, a real thing that's harming me, I will rationalize it away and excuse it. I need time, energy, can't do it, always been this way, genetics, etc. The main issues why many people stay stuck without overcoming their limits is because they don't recognize them, they're too scared to recognize them, or they don't believe anything can improve. The last one is a function of being afraid of the pain that is required to change or sticking with the minimal pleasure like comfort that comes with not changing. So they run in circles instead of seeing the limitations for what they are, opportunities for transformation and better experience of life. That is more pleasure. Number two, willingness. Most of us are scared of change. We want the comfortable. We will even lie to ourselves to stay comfortable. I've done this. Maybe I don't have to do the hard thing and let go. Maybe a miracle will happen. And I believed it. I'm sure you have too. However, if we want to break through our own limitations and change, we have to be willing to do so. We have to be willing to do what we perceive as hard or painful. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves, like many people, regretful for missing those opportunities to grow. It's a familiar narrative. OMG, all the time I wasted on this person or that thing, etc. Number three, Support system. After we've identified what limits we have and willed to change them, we need a support system. Again, this is another area where we might fool ourselves unless we have the right kind of support. And these are key guidelines. People or tools will give us insights, support us through it all, and yet hold us accountable. This is one of the areas where a coach can be really helpful. Yes, I am shamelessly telling you to hire me. Number four, cut the... Elizabeth Gilbert has a great quote that sums up this step perfectly, quote, 
I've never seen any life transformation that didn't begin with a person in question finally getting tired of their own bullshit, end quote. The more we own up to our own limitations and recognize how much we're playing a victim, the more we will get tired of that. Of course, only if we want to. Otherwise, like 75% of Americans who report to live unsatisfactory lives, we can also indulge in this comfortable discomfort, never really owning it up. And number five, face the fear. You know how much I love talking about this greatest demon of our human existence. What are we really afraid of that's stopping us from recognizing our limitations and willingly overcoming them? Fear of turbulence, that we'll lose our identity, who we think we are. Fear of pain, no pain, no gain, folks. So yes, each of our limitations are very real and many of us don't even see or are willing to admit these limitations, but with the appropriate awareness, attitude, and systems, change is possible. And what a change it could be. As I wrote this post, a client messaged me to report that she's lost 70 pounds over the last two years. Her secret? The list you just heard. You just listened to the post titled Limitations by Audie Redzik of audiredzik.com. And thank you to Audie. Come by his site. I have it linked in this episode's description and at oldpodcast.com. It means a lot when you visit our author's sites. I'm a huge fan of accountability with exercise, business, even just hanging out with friends. If you have someone or some people always checking in with you, it really makes it harder to come up with excuses. So if there's change you truly want, look into finding someone who actually holds you accountable and do those things with you that you might struggle to do on your own. Let me know how it goes. That'll do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you over the weekend where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.